Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Johnson, thank you for being here today. Um, does what occurs on the southwest border, uh, does that impact your agency? Yes, it does. And recently, the Chief of Border Patrol uh, testified before Congress that five of the nine sectors along the southwest border are not secure. Uh, would you agree with his assessment? I would defer to the Border Patrol. So if the Chief of the Border Patrol said that, then you would defer to him versus Secretary Mayorkas, who continues to maintain that the border is secure from sea to shining seas. Is that correct? I would defer to them over B making any sort of an assessment as to whether the border is secure or not. Uh, and in and, and your budget, there is a budget decrease for detention beds. Uh, last year, on average, according to your report uh, from December of December 30, 2022, in the ICE annual report, uh, you stated that the average of the report, and I'm not stating you, I'm assuming your agency stated that on average there were 22,630 individuals uh, in detention. Does that number sound correct? Sounds about right. Uh, and we know that looking at the report as far as uh, the docket that your agency maintains uh, that there are over 4.7 million individuals, non-citizens, that are in the United States in some shape, form, or fashion, roughly uh, 1.2 million where there are final orders of removal, and then 3.5 million, according to this, where there have been no final orders of removal. Does that 4.75, 4, 4,750,000 figure, uh, does that sound accurate? It does. Uh, and we know last year, uh, your agency removed roughly 72,000 individuals from the country, correct? That's correct. And of those individuals that were removed, we know that some of those individuals uh, were individuals uh, which uh, were individuals who had criminal histories. That is also correct. Your report says that of the 72,000, that 44,096 of those individuals had criminal histories. Uh, that of those 44,000 people, there were 183,251 charges associated with them for an average of 4.2 charges and convictions per person, that there were 17,336 who were charged with assault, 7,370 charged with sex offenses or sexual assault, 4,711 4, individuals charged with weapon offenses, 1,315 charged with homicide-related offenses, 953 were charged or convicted of kidnapping, uh, that your agency removed 2,667 known or suspected gang members, and to me the most troubling of all is 56 known or suspected terrorists were removed from the country last year. And so my question is, we've got this huge number, this huge population where your agency is responsible for trying, and I know that you don't have the manpower, and I'm not blaming you personally, I'm blaming the system, but we have a system in where we have 4.7 million people who are loose in the country that we, in many cases, don't know where those people are. We only have, we only have bed space to detain 25,000. We're not using all that bed space. We have what we know to be some of those individuals are violent criminals because we deported them last year, including known or suspected terrorists, but we're asking for a decrease in the detention beds. And, and, and to me, that is the worst thing we should do. Clearly, we need detention beds because some of the people we're allowing to come into the country, your report here, your end report talks about how bad these individuals are, that they've killed people, they've assaulted people sexually, that they're known or terrorists, known or suspected terrorists, and yet you're coming in and you're asking, your agency is, and I'm assuming that you approve the budget, you're asking for a decrease in detention beds. So I'm asking you to please justify to me why we need to be spending less money on detention beds when we're seeing a huge rise in immigrant population, when we know that some of that population are committing violent offenses because you documented in your report. And so please, in the last 20 seconds that I have remaining of my time, please justify to me why we should be reducing detention beds and not adding detention beds. So, uh very good question. Um, I, I would say that we, we are not reducing our detention beds, um, that, that 25,000 
of the beds are in our base budget, and the remaining 9,000 beds are in the contingency fund that, as I've already explained, I believe I will have access to. Why are they not in the primary budget? Why are they in the contingency budget? If detention beds are important, which I believe that they are, and I believe many people on this committee, Republicans and Democrats, would believe that detention beds are important, for them not to be in the primary, uh, to, to me, is, is a colossal failure. No. And so it, if you could explain why they're in the contingency versus the primary, I would love to hear that. If you can't explain, that, then I understand, and, and I'll move on uh, I, because I know my time has expired. I, I cannot explain exactly why it was structured that way. Uh, but, you know, I, what, what was most important for me as an operator was that I was going to have access to those nine, those 9,000 beds the first day of the fiscal year, and that's what I was assured. Are, are 34,000 beds enough? For, enough for what? Is, well, I guess enough to the perform the, the, the mission that, that you're tasked to do. I mean, two. I mean, when we, when we have 4.7 million people that are in the country and we're only detaining somewhere between 25,000 and, 30, and 34,000, I mean, that's, what, less than one half of 1%? I mean, you have to draw the line somewhere. I mean, 70,000, in, in my view, 70,000 beds wouldn't put much more of a dent in this problem than... What, 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 sh what should the number be? As the director of this agency, it, what, what, what is the proper number of detention beds? It would depend on what you... And, and what, what folks actually thought was an acceptable number of... Well, I, I'm asking you what, what your opinion, because, I mean, you, you clearly have been involved with this agency. Um, you know, on one hand, you, we're saying that we last year utilized 22. We're budgeting 25. We think we might be up to 34. We have historically made do with 34. Uh, but we've not seen the immigrant surge that we've seen the last two years. I mean, we've had record immigrant surge the last two years and on pace to break that record again. We've got 4.7 million in the country, 1.2 million, which should be removed because there are removal orders that we're not removing from the country. And we know that there are some of those people who were released in the interior are violent individuals or at least commit violent crimes once they're released into the interior because that's documented in your report. No, I, I certainly agree that the, the, the folks who commit violent crimes have to be a priority for, for, for detention beds. In 2019, there was a similar surge, probably not nearly as, as, as much, but still fairly significant, and we brought on 20,000 additional beds, and, and we filled those beds up in, in, in no time as well. So I, I, I personally don't think there's a number of beds that you could actually buy that's going to solve the problems that we're, uh, that, that this problem that we're seeing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm over time. I yield back. Thank you.